Hey everyone, this is Paul Zahn, and you are watching Tipsy Television. On today's show, we're catching up with an outspoken, filter-free woman from Mobwise, Renee Graziano. We're sitting down with her, her sister Jen, and her sister Lana to talk about how to use a meat cleaver, their new book. Stay tuned. Welcome, Renee, Lana, and Jen. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Hi, how are you? Now, before we get started, guys, do you know how to make homemade limoncello? I don't. Nope. Nope. Well, we are. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay, well, let's just say you don't. Right okay. Now. So, she don't right now. Okay. Because so, he said so. And he's actually in charge of the cleaver. So. So, I'm going to show the viewers at home right now how to make homemade limoncello, and we'll be right back. Now, what you need is 10 lemons, a bottle of vodka, Two and a half cups of sugar, three and a half cups of water, and that's it. Sweet and sour. Let's get started. Step one, grate the lemon. Step two, combine the grated lemon with the vodka. Next step is to cover the pitcher with plastic wrap and let it sit room temperature for four days. Four days, right? Now, stir the water and the sugar in a large saucepan over medium heat until the sugar dissolves for about five minutes. Cool that completely. Now, combine the sugar syrup into the lemon juice. Let the lemon cello sit overnight in the refrigerator and pour into individual glasses. And there you go, homemade limoncello. Easy, breezy, simple. So ladies, what do you think of the limoncello? Oh, it was amazing. It's good, so right? It's so good. It's lemony. It's lemony. That's what we like. That's what we like. Um, now, tell me about your book, How to Use a Meat Cleaver. Well, it's, a, uh, it's an authentic Italian cookbook. The title is very tongue cheek but if we wanted to do that to really catch people's attention. But it can stand against any authentic Italian cookbook out there. It's actually really good. Family recipes, family stories you've never seen before. It's fun. Great. It's Great. fun. Yeah, it's fun, and it's a way for us to pay tribute to our parents um, for being such great parents and teaching us so much in the kitchen. Now, Renee, I, I know that on Mob Wives, family is such a huge thing, and my family would sell me down the river for a six-pack of beer and a hot dog. So, <laughs> tell me a little bit about... <laughs> well, mine would for some meatballs. <laughs> uh, Nobody in our family would sell anyone down the river ever. Right. No, I was just eating. So, tell me about Mob Wives, they were hungry. No. <laughs> Mob Wives, your life and the lifestyle, and how family plays into that. Um, my family life is um, somewhat different than what you see on TV because no one in my family is mean and vicious like what you see on TV. Um, my sisters will always have my back. So um, beware girls, like I said, my sisters have my back. There we go. <laughs> now, Renee, we all loved the reunion of Mob Wives. I feel that some of the cast are, you know, pot stirrers, Alicia. <clears throat> Um, but tell us a little bit about something we did not see on the reunion. Um, you didn't see the truth and the whole story uh, on the reunion because I didn't get it. I really was actually trying to contain myself and I think I did a pretty good job. Great job. Thank you. Uh, it was very, I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen the reunion. Okay. So um, after being there for the, the three hours that we were, I was uh, very upset and very saddened by the uh, level of viciousness and the level of jealousy and what the girl, uh, Natalie, was trying to do to out me on things that are very, very personal. And I don't, I, and I want to say that, you know, I've said it on, I know I said it on the reunion that I don't really care what people say about me because it, listen, people have been talking for so many years that it doesn't bother me. And um, my recovery is something, uh, very important to me, so for someone to make fun of it like they did during the season, or for someone to think that it's it's an everyday struggle for anybody who has dealt with addiction, and so for someone to try to belittle another person based on their addiction is very disturbing to me, and that person is a, a very ignorant, small-minded person, and I actually feel bad for her, so instead of lashing out any further, I'd rather pray for the girl than attack her, because my attack didn't really work the first time, and uh, I'm not a fighter at all. 
You're a lover. Renee's I a am. lover. I'm a lover. We love that. Okay. All right, now, ladies, we're going to play one quick game. It is called Sweet or Sour. I mean, we made lemon drops, lemon cello, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to name a celebrity, and you have to tell me if you hung out with them if you thought they'd be you know, sweet or maybe sour. Okay. So we are going to start off with Lana and Christina Aguilera. Sweet. Sweet? You think she'd be sweet? Yes. Okay. Moving on to Jen. Jen. I think she'd be a perfect balance of the two, depending on the situation. And Renee. I'm going to go, I don't think sour would be, I think she could probably be a little sharp. Like, oh, like, sharp. like your choices are sweet or I sour. I can't, she's not sweet or sour. Renee remakes games. She's like, she goes on, she goes on like, okay. the price is so right, she's like Jeopardy. What is sweet and sour mix? Like, that's what she is. Okay, yeah. right. it's, okay. A well, it's a Chinese food dish. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you ladies so much for stopping by Tipsy Television today. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you very much.